This is ADHD Self Mastery. Customized solutions for your unique brain with Bonnie Minku, Senior Certified ADHD Coach. If you have traits of ADD or ADHD, you may struggle with getting started on a task or planning a project. Maybe you're easily overwhelmed or perpetually late, miss deadlines or can't get organized. Bonnie brings you concise, tangible strategies and solutions to help you break through these challenges and accomplish your goals. ADHD Self Mastery starts now. Hi, I'm Bonnie Minku, Senior Certified ADHD Coach and Founder of Thrive with ADD, and you're listening to ADHD Self Mastery. Today I'm interviewing Tracy Brown, and she is a fabulous, accomplished, and very funny person who just, by the way, has ADHD. And the reason I say by the way is Tracy's on my marketing team. And she's done customer reach out and support for my Productivity Pathfinder ADHD membership program for about two years. And she may have mentioned she had ADHD herself to me back when she was first working with me. But if she did, it was really just sort of an aside because I just don't remember that. And last week I asked Tracy if she could facilitate my community Monday meetings for the Pathfinder people since I'd be on vacation. And she said, yeah, I'd really enjoy that because I never get to hang out with other people with ADD. And that's when I said, wait a minute, you mean you really have ADD or ADHD? And she said, yeah, she's been taking Adderall for years. And I was really thrilled about that because Tracy is so amazing. And I knew right then I wanted her to be a guest on this ADHD self mastery podcast. So here is Tracy Brown. And I'm going to talk her through some of the interesting things about her life and mainly about her perspective on life, which uh, is really why I wanted to interview her. So Tracy, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to do this with you. (laughs) This is just wonderful. Yeah, I'm really glad that you are. So just in kind of broad strokes, tell us about where you grew up your family, you had a bunch of brothers. Yeah, so I am obviously from the Carolinas. If you hear me speak, I'm very Southern. Um, I grew up in the Carolinas my whole life. I live in um, the Myrtle Beach area of South Carolina now. Um, But I grew up in Western North Carolina. Um, I have um, three brothers and one sister. We're kind of a blended family, you know, typical American family, Um, you know, with his, hers, ours, kids, but um, I was lucky enough to get um, step siblings that um, you never hear us say step. I think um, we oh, yeah. kind of landed the jackpot um, on our blended family as when it comes to our siblings. So, uh, so um, that's pretty good. Do you feel like, or looking back now, do you believe any of your siblings were ADHD as well? No, I think I'm totally the only one. Wow. So yeah. you must have felt a little difference in your family. Oh yeah, and they're all like very artsy and creative. And no, I'm totally the odd man out. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're, 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 that, that's funny because often the ADHD child is the artsy, creative one, and they might say things. Yeah, my sibling's a doctor, a lawyer, a, you know, Wall Street, something like that. So yeah. there's yeah, real interesting bucks the stereotype not, there. my brothers are in construction but they are very like my um one of my brothers does hardwood floors but he's like does these really crazy creative like things in these really like fancy homes like with hardwood floors like it's amazing the work he does so that's where he like pulls out his artistic side it's amazing so um yeah I grew up there I have a married or I'm well I was married I'm going through a divorce but I have two kids um I just didn't went off to college my first one just went to college and I have a um, my son's in school um I'm playing soccer in college and then my daughter is a junior in high school really good well Ron, I'm going to be asking you about the kids a little yeah. later I want to go back a little bit to your childhood Okay, we can do that. So you felt kind of the odd one in your family. And then when you were in school, did you feel a little bit different than a lot of other kids in the way you were learning? It it was very obvious. Um, I couldn't sit down and read books. I I did well in school. Um, 
had good grades, but um, if I heard it, not because you studied hard though, right? No, if I heard it, (laughs) I knew it. Like if I had a teacher that lectured, I just remembered things really well. But if I had to read a book and I had friends who would just read books and knock them out and knock them out and knock them out. And I couldn't understand, like I couldn't sit and read a book and I couldn't, I, I couldn't get through a page. Um, I couldn't get through a paragraph and read a book and, and I wouldn't like, I'd have to reread a paragraph three times to understand what I had read and I could read, like I could mm-hmm. tell you what the word said, but then I'd read a paragraph and couldn't tell you what the paragraph said. It was so really so like a, a classic reading comprehension. I guess they'd call that a learning disability, but into that very specific reading comprehension area, yeah. not dyslexia, you know, nothing like that. It was really specific. I didn't, I didn't enjoy sitting still. So like <laughs> being still with a book, all I was doing was, I think a lot of it was just, I was thinking of everything else I wanted, like going on too and you know I wanted to do I had 10 other things going through my head and so that was always difficult for me um so I just figured out how to pass a test I figured out how to take a test and if you figure out how to take a test you can get through school right did did you remember did you ever like sit down with yourself and think okay I am going to figure out test taking strategy or Um, or did just kind of natural came to you and I don't know if we discussed this, but I thought about it later after we talked. My dad taught me how to play poker when I was a little kid. <laughs> and he always taught me strategies of how to do things and how to win um, and how to pay attention to what other people did. And teachers always made their tests the same way. Each teacher had mm-hmm. a certain pattern how they made a test. Um, and it went with their personality. Um, like I had one teacher who they did a multiple choice test and it always spelled out a word. <laughs> I think I if I had a teacher like that, I doubt if I would have even noticed it spelled out a word. Wow. Yeah, so if you could figure out what the word was, you could pass hmm. the test. His name was Coach Prue and he taught US history in 11th That's grade. A, yeah, memory, wow. Yeah, so All right. these were things like, those are strategies. Like if you could figure out the strategy, you could pass um, and you could pass well. And so, everybody so, you, so you never decided, hey, I can't sit down and read a book and get anything out of it. So I'm a bad student. No, I'm I just, just going to blow off school. Yeah, I just figured out, okay, how can, mm-hmm. how can I um, do well with what I got? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's what my dad always told me is like, how do you play the hand you're dealt? Like you, he always said, you can play with, Brilliant. you can win with any hand. You know, you just got to figure out how to win with that hand. So they should be writing, a, you know, instead of rich dad, poor dad, it's like, did my dad teach me how to play poker? Great life lesson <laughs> from a poker playing dad. <laughs> that it's sounds really good. Funny that he did that. Um, but that's I think it's, it's he, great. It, it's given you a lot of wisdom though for life. But he would do that and he would talk about other things when I was little too. And I didn't realize how much it kind of flowed over into other things we would talk about. Um, Cause he passed away when I was 13. So I really mm-hmm. didn't even have that many years oh, with wow. him. Um, but those were things he'd always say is, you know, how you just, you know, use what you got. And, you know, cause there's always somebody that's got a skill you don't have. Right. You know, so you work with what and, you got and figure out how to make it work. And, and we'll talk a little later about this, you know, how to use the skills that other people have to your advantage as well. But oh, yeah. um, I had asked you about math. Because when you told me a little bit about how your brain worked, I sort of suspected that you and math, you never had to go through those little steps of problem solving. No, I used to get in trouble all the time. So I did really well in math, but I could just look at a problem and tell them the answer. And in algebra, they want you to show all the steps. Right. And I would be like, well, why do they I want Because they want to see how you think. Did you learn how to think through the problem? And I would be like, well, I know the answer. So what does it matter? Because I could get the answer. And then I was like, why are you wasting my time doing that? And finally, and when I got to high school, I had a teacher who finally had me tested for to be gifted and, or, you know, 
back then I think they call it academically gift or whatever and she's like why haven't you done this and I was like well, I don't know because I wouldn't do the work I just would write down the answer and they were wondering if you were cheating or not mm-hmm. um but I could just work backwards I'd just work backwards through something um it was just the way my brain worked and my son does the same thing with math mm-hmm. and I finally told him I was like I did the same thing just write it out keep your teachers happy and get through Yep. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to get through the class. Yeah. In the real world, nobody cares. <laughs> well, uh, wait, it depends. If you well, have a boss who wants to, to do pedantic step by step by step, they care. So you almost have to fake it. But luckily for you, you never had that kind of situation. But we'll get into, uh, yeah, life after school. And you did things kind of a, it's funny, as we were talking earlier, I was thinking, man, she is like in every way flip opposite of me. So you, so you got married early, right? Mm-hmm. I did. And, and then I not, not, early. not super early, probably. No, I, did, I, did, I did. I got married the first time early. Okay. Um, I got married at 19 and down with college. Yeah. Um, and started in a direct sales company with Mary Kay and moved very quickly through that company. Now, um, tell us a little bit about Mary Kay. You had to do sales, right? Sales. And then it was started building a team. Um, right. I've always played sports too. And I think it's just a matter of, I've always been very coachable. And I always was very intentional about who I learned from and who I took advice from. I never take advice from anybody who doesn't take their own advice. Um, and I was always very coachable. I, you know, mm-hmm. I wanted to learn. I still love to learn. I still love to learn. So what did you do with that kind of philosophy? When, let's take you back to when you first started with Mary Kay. So I looked How at did you people, succeed so fast? I looked at the people who were in leadership roles and I followed them around and then just copied and did what they did. And did um, they know you were doing that? Did, like, did you oh, yeah, tell them, hey, I, I'd like to copy you? Ooh, okay. I was very intentional about it. And mm-hmm. the ones that were like upper level that if they weren't driving a pink Cadillac, I didn't hang out with them. All right. Now you got to tell us about pink Cadillac because some people yeah. don't know what that's all about. Mary yeah. Kay rewards their really top, top people with a pink yeah. Cadillac. So, yeah. So there's different levels of cars you can earn in the company, but pink Cadillac is like the upper echelon. It's like top one percent or something of the company so like that is the upper echelon of of the company and that's a huge so, company isn't it I oh mean, yeah huge, that's huge. Is, like at the time i think they were in like 28 countries and oh my yeah. god so yeah. upper top percent that's like really oh, yeah. something oh yeah yeah oh most definitely Learn more about Bonnie and her Productivity Pathfinder training program for ADHD adults at thrivewithadd.com.